it's Susan from Seaside Stitches and welcome to my channel. It is the first weekend in January and I'm just going to go over a few of my makes. Well, what really I'm, I want to share with you is what I've learned and what I've learned in 2023 regards to sewing and myself and things. Okay, so if that sounds okay with you, we'll get cracking. So I'm hoping that the lighting will be okay. We'll go with it for now and see how that goes. So in here, I don't have a rail that I can bring out, but I do have a wardrobe. Ta -da! So I'm gonna start at that end. It's not all of this by any means, and I'm not going to go, go through everything at all. But if I start to get too chatty, then I'll have to make two videos. <laughs> Okay, so I started the year with a little plan to have my first vlog of the year was just keep warm in January. Okay, so in just keep warm in January, I made a billy sweater. Now I didn't like it. I don't feel now that every time I've worn it and I've said I don't like this, I'm not giving it a fair go. So I made it in a ponte that's quite a heavy thing and it's not my pink. I know it's only marginally not my pink but it's just not my pink. But I didn't do a low bust adjustment. I just made it as is and I kind of dared it to fit me. And if it fit me, that was fine. I made some, um, the shoulders were quite low down and I didn't like it, but I took the cheats way out really, the lazy way out and I just turned it over. And so I lost some of the gather in uh, some of the length of the sleeve in the fact that I turned it over rather than taking some off the sleeve, the, the, this bit, this bit, that I always take at least half an inch off that bit. I think I did, and it was still not quite right, but then I just turned it over. So I've not been thrilled with it. It doesn't fit me how I'd like it to fit me. And because I've seen so many others that people do look good in, I may give this another go. But I know that every time I wear it, I go, I'm wearing my billy sweater, but I don't like it. But anyway, <laughs> Anyway, that was one of my just keep warm in January makes and it do, it is warm and I do like it because I can put a sweater underneath it. So that's that, one of my many uh, ready-made polar necks. So the next thing, or, or all three together really, I made these two kind of in tandem and I just really like these and these are my most made, most worn me made tops yes and well most worn tops really on top of a polar neck and i have a polar neck that is more or less that royal blue that i usually wear under that one and and or the red one but the blue one goes well with that and i have a red one that i usually team with that and these are linear or linear sweaters from sinclair patterns now i love a sinclair pattern uh, as is evidenced by the fact that I have five Harper cardigans, but um, I like the long, they have a tall, a regular and a petite version, just drafted differently. And so it, it just makes a big difference because even when I did these sleeves, I think it was this one, um, I did quite a, an extra, I added a little bit to the sleeve, but I didn't need to, so I ended up taking it off. No, it was this one because that's how that ends up with just a one little cuff thing. Now, I don't particularly like this fabric, and I said that every time I made the Westcliff dress, I mentioned this fabric. Um, it was just that it gave me some problems, and uh, there was a fault on the fabric. Anyway, let's not go into that again, but I wanted something that would uh, be stretchy. These are in fleece back sweatshirting from Minerva and they are in their core range and I bought one meter of turquoise, one meter of red, one meter of royal blue. And I've, I have since bought the, I can't remember which pink it is, but it's my pink. And I've shown you that on something, but I haven't made it up yet. And I'm wanting to make um, another one of these using the pink and some of these scraps to do the color blocking. So one thing that I learned in January was that I really enjoyed the colour blocking. Now, there were some slight fit issues in that I have a sway back. I didn't do a sway back adjustment. I've still never done a sway back adjustment, but I'm, I'm kind of hurried along 
to do so because I've had I've seen so much success from Nadia Stitch and Style by Nadia who regularly does a sway back adjustment and she's got me hooked now into thinking I must do one and I have spoken to her about it because I did meet her at the Northwest Sewing so Social that's another thing that I've learned that I could actually manage to get myself to a sewing social and enjoy it and I went three times I did book a fourth but sadly I wasn't well enough to go um, but the week after that I also went to the sewing institute is at near Lytham between St Anne's, St Anne's and Lytham uh, on the file coast not very far from me and I took the sidekick bag that I was working on so that was kind of towards the end of December or I don't know when it was really it was the 13th. I couldn't go on the 6th to Christine's Northwest Sewing Social, but I went on the 13th just for from half 12 till 3, and I think it's £6. But I met some lovely sewers. It was really nice. We were sat on a biggish table for four. There were four of those, and then I think maybe another one in the other room, and then a big table for people who were crocheting or hand sewing or knitting. Or It was really nice, and... I borrowed one of their sewing machines so that meant I didn't have to worry about um, parking, dropping off my machine, going finding somewhere to park, which I don't do at, at the Northwest Sewing Social because there is a dedicated car park. Anyway, so I've already deviated, but what I was saying was when I was doing, yes, so I spoke to Nadia. I was a little bit of a fangirl, little bit. I kept, I was hounding her really. She went to talk to people, I was there at her side. Anyway, never mind. Um, I'm going to hers in, on the 27th of January. If I can fathom that traffic where you have to, where I live, you have to go onto the M62. Well, it, I think they called it the M6 did now for about 15 years, but I still know it as a 62. And I have to cross over two lanes of traffic to get in the far two lanes. And it's quite fast moving traffic, unless they're actually already in the traffic jam. So if so, I'm all right, but if not, and then I've got to manoeuvre to somewhere I don't know where I'm going, but that's fine, I will do it. So, yes, so this one is nipped in a bit here because once I'd made it, I decided I needed to do something about it. So I took this piece, these pieces off, and I recut this. It's very difficult to make a, um, an, an alteration when you've got your colour blocking is going to meet at the side seams or not meet at the side seams as the case may be but although they're not the same not the same colours on this one um you're conscious you don't want that to be down here and that up there if you know what i mean anyway what i was saying was before that i got this this is just no it's a french terry but it's got more stretch than this has and that's why i used it for the neckband so that's where i interrupted myself about that to turn it round to show you the back of this one because I've got a bigger piece in this one and then I had to tell you about the fitting that brought me into Nadia that brought me into sewing socials I'll <laughs> I'll get my coat right so that's that I'm going to put them back because otherwise I'm going to have a big mess so I think they were the main things in January but I also finished a bag for my son which was a double zip gear bag by by Annie Patterns and I don't have it here to show you I will pop a picture in um, usually I put it in and I disappear so <laughs> I might be talking underneath a double zip gear bag now okay so that's another thing that I finished I had had it cut out for many a month I had all the pieces together ready but I hadn't actually sewn it together but I did do it then so that was one that I finished and I'm not sure, I think that was as well. Yes, so this is made from just scraps of fabric that were left over. I didn't make it into a pat patchwork pattern. I just got as much possible fabric out of the scraps of this. Um, and this is the dress that the scraps were from. Now this is one of the first dresses that I finished when I came here and we came in 2015 but I 
yeah no it's the first one i made fully while we lived here and that would have been sorry at the beginning of the dreaded lockdown so sometime in 2020 i bought the fabric and i made it and it wouldn't fit me i didn't make this this wasn't the pattern i chose i used uh, it really doesn't matter there's a whole video about it how i rescued this dress but i made the top i, I managed to find enough fabric uh, uh, enough in the dress to create a different bodice i could not get the fit right on the princess seams i'd made two others with that pattern one went okay the other one didn't and is in pieces again now because I've had that one 15 years, no, 12 years, something like that. Um, but I used it, but it was very flattening on the bust. Um, anyway, I just absolutely love this dress. And when I shared it, either on Facebook with my anti-fracking friends or activist friends, Gillian, someone had run this, the hub, I'll put that down a minute. Someone who had run the Scrubs Hub making uniforms, scrubs, for nurses and medical people during lockdown, uh, Julian got in touch with me and said, would I mind exhibiting this in a little exhibition she was doing? It was, it was more of a kind of show and tell about what people have been making and a craft thing. So I said, oh, yes, please. Thank you very much for asking. So then that didn't happen. Well, I think we had another lockdown. I'll pop that back. That didn't happen, but eventually she put on quite a big exhibition in the old build, the building that had been Fleetwood Hospital. So it just felt really lovely that she was gonna do that, but the date had been fixed. And then a couple of weeks before she contacted me and asked me, would I mind making a dress with some fabric that some community group had taken advantage of her art um, input in the community and they'd made blocks of fabric and patterns for all sorts of things, P patterns of things, you know, like, I don't mean a pattern to make, I mean a design. So they had created a design and then she'd had it, she was about to have it printed on fabric and would I make a dress? And I did make a dress and I did also film the process of me making this dress. We had a Mac Mini at the time and it started to go crazy. And I lost or I thought I'd lost all the footage for that, which came to about three hours worth of footage um, just in the parts that I'd videoed. So I thought that was totally lost and I found it again earlier this year and I am going to still put it together and put it out but it's come have I've found it just as its raw data I haven't found it as the almost finished video that I'd actually got so far with if you know what I mean so it just needs quite a bit of work on it but I will put it out because it was just an interesting thing to do it's not everyone's cup of tea to watch a sew along and to me they're more so with me when I do a sew along I'm not doing a tutorial, I'm not doing... Michelle does awesome, absolutely wonderful sew-alongs. Michelle at so the Sewing Bunny. Michelle at Sewing Bunny. And she takes you through even tracing the pattern, um, going through all the stages, and this is what she's doing next, and this is how she's doing this, and this is how she's doing that. I don't do that. I just have you along with me for the ride. You are my company for the afternoon or the several days or however long that is while I am sewing. So that's what you get. If it says sew along on my previous videos, that's what's happening. And I'm really I'd be really pleased to have you along, but that is what I'm planning to do in the future sometime. So that wasn't with that fabric, but it was with fabric that had been printed specially for that from a community project. So I'm aware that this pull on here that I've done previously with a bracelet, just keeps wafting about it's getting on my nerves so it may be getting on yours anyway what i was saying was i made this now i may have finished it in 20, in february i don't know but it's called the open wide bag it's a patterns by annie it's a by annie pattern i love making her patterns as i've said a number of times and 
I just like the sense of achievement when you create something that is so well finished and so well thought out as a pattern and just so, I don't know, it kind of gives me a big hug to know that I've been able to follow the pattern itself. And so that is my Open Wide 2.0 by Any Pattern, which I made at the beginning of the year. The other things that I did were, these are called Finally Finished in February. And that goes with the video Finally Finished in February. Because I started that at about 18 months beforehand, before February <laughs> this year. And it's gone in a drawer, it's come out again, it's... I, and I don't know why I wasn't finishing it. But the other thing, another thing that I learnt was I had not sewn on, I had not done a machine made buttonhole or any buttonhole since I made four buttonholes at the beginning of, I started my vlogging about October and I started my actually coming back into sewing about July, August, maybe July, August, something like that. And I made a little, a couple of teddy bears for my son, for my grandsons, and I made them little dungarees off a kind of self-made pattern, adapting the teddy bear pattern itself. And so I made buttonholes on those. I put the buttonholes on, did lots of practice, did those, and that was the end of buttonholes for me. And then this February, I actually put the buttonholes in this and put the cuffs on and did whatever type of finish that is on a cuff and then uh yeah and relatively nicely finished the cuff and and i just love the buttons being i've got the red i didn't have enough for down the front and those but i realized that if i did matching uh, red ones on there they still match the red sails and I had enough to do just blue ones on there. So, cause I had, I think I had two blue ones left, but I'd forgotten that it needs to four, four button, two buttons per cuff. So that was that. And there is a pattern. That is the pattern I used for that. It's the McCall's 6750. Very simple pattern, but you end up with a bit of a bunch at the back of your neck. Someone else has made it and said that, but maybe you wouldn't get it. Um, I don't know, maybe I just didn't have the size right, but it's, it's, I like it. It's nice. It's just in some cotton poly or poly cotton. And I was inspired to make it by Laura at So Very Easy, who does lots of quilting and lots of bags and lots of tips and tricks and things. And she's, she's just adorable. I love her. Um, and I watched, I used to watch her right the beginning of my journey so that's that and so one of the things I did was I wouldn't say I conquered buttonholes because I hadn't been frightened of them but the last garment I made was uh, with a button was a button on the skirt for my silver wedding anniversary and we've now been married 51 years so that was 26 years ago wasn't it and the last shirt I made well, it was in the 70s that mm, yes well i made one for alan for my 21st birthday party because he wanted a shirt with turn back cuffs and couldn't get one in his size because he's very slim um and so i made him one of those but that was well i'm 70 so I will, i'll let you work out how long ago that is <laughs> if i was 21 and this i nearly put it back is the camden pinafore with eight inches added onto the bottom. Um, I didn't line this one. I did, this is another one that was finally finished in February because I started it. I remade the bodice. Uh, I did have a bodice that was lined, but again, I couldn't get this princess seam right. And it's still not right. Um, it's fine to wear it, but I know I could get a better fit if I put more effort in, but I'm okay with that. So that's that. And then following on from, but I think there are two tops that I made in between because I made two tops. Forget me not patterns are really good for me, <laughs> except I do forget. So it is 
the April top. Vera, Vera, the Vera top. I was real, what I learnt from that was I could put in a V-neck band on in t-shirt fabric. So it was, it's in cotton lycra. It's on a video somewhere around, well, it would be on my reveal video for So Frugal 2023. I don't know if it was So Frugal 23 or So Frugal 2023, but anyway, it's on my reveal video. But since making it, um the sleeves i'd added length to the sleeves because i've never made that pattern before and it's got kind of a bishop sleeve and i'd added length and when i put the cuff on which is quite a long cuff there was far too much material i'd, I'd... top the free top from forget me not patterns and i love it it's <laughs> trying to get me in the shrubbery okay so and i looked on my, my notes for some reason, I'd added four inches or something to the sleeve. I've no idea why. But I took that apart, I don't know, towards the end of whenever this was. So I don't know if So Frugal is February, March-ish. Um, but whenever it was, since then, I took the cuffs off, chopped off the extra, and it sat in a bag somewhere to have the sleeve put back on it. I took it to a sewing social twice and didn't get it out of the bag. And I've realized I don't like the lilac color. I'm not bothering with it anymore. I'm gonna put it on one side and work out what else I can do with it or nothing with it. So that's that. And I also made a lovely turquoise one, a, a really quite vibrant turquoise one. And that was a deer and doe, it's a plantain tea. I think it's deer and doe. And that fit me nice, quite a um, easy fit and I really liked that. Anyway, I really liked it, but my friend was very poorly at the time and she said she'd seen it on one of my videos and she really liked it. And I talked about it with her about whether she would like me to make a one and she said yes. So time being an issue, I'll just say, I took that one with me to see if it fit her just to see that I would make the right size and if it suited her before I ordered the fabric. So two days after she spoke to me, I, I went again and took the... Anyway, so she tried it on, she really loved it. And so we decided if she was happy with that one, I'd send for fabric and make myself another one. She was happy with it. I never got my own fabric and, I, and I'm absolutely fine about that. And I hope she did wear it. Um, because it was a pleasure to see her happy about it and knowing that. And then she'd sent me a lovely message saying that, that oh, and then it turned out to have been her birthday within that week or something. So anyway, so I don't have that one to show you, but it is on a video and I did like that. And I do have plans to send for that fabric and make another one. So that's another thing. And then this is my little foray into Pattern Emporium Take the Chance dress and I love their, well I love their patterns, I've only got this one made up which is the Take the Chance and and see what you see, you see buttonholes and buttons and um, yeah this is such a free flowing floaty dress, I just, I can't say how much I love this and I managed to have it finished for my holidays and it just felt bit nice um, and I tended to wear it with a, a long ago bought cardigan from Bon Marche <laughs> bon Marche. when I was supporting my mum and used to get her Bon Marche cardigans and jumpers and I fancied that colour myself so that's that and then another one that I finished but I'd started probably two years before is my This one, which is Simplicity 2247, and I just love this. And I wanted to wear it on the second day of the oh, Knitting and Stitching show at Harrogate, but there was an issue and we weren't able to go to the second day, but I went with my sister and we just had a fabulous time. And um, 
even though when I would got back to the car after parking and nipping into the hotel just to say was it still all right for us to park on the car park and use their facilities which we were both jumping about and desperate to do I didn't realize but I left my lights on and so when I got back I had to mess about getting green flag out and they were absolutely amazing and I felt like a stupid woman you know you do and they took all that away there were the woman who spoke to me about organizing it the message I got about someone will be coming the guy himself they were absolutely splendid no kind of you know what if you've experienced that kind of thing and you've had that kind of like oh yeah silly woman I didn't get any of that and I was so pleased about that but I did have to sit in the car park revving it for 40 minutes. <laughs> but I wasn't alone. I was with my sister, so that was fine. Because it was tea time. He said, you're better off going for a drive now. We've got it going. And, and there was stopping. They were kind of bumper to bumper outside the gates of the hotel because it was just five o'clock, half five. And so it was uh, rush hour. So we wouldn't have known where to go. It was dark and we'd have just been stop start. So he said, just do it in the car park. So I was very um, non-ecological, which did upset me a bit in case people were thinking that that's how I am generally, but I'm not. Anyway, um, yes, I really like this dress and putting that on after taking it off months before, <laughs> it took me a couple of months to put it back on again. But anyway, I like it and that's that. And then what did I do? I made another Take the Chance dress. But I think in between making this and that other one, I made this. Now I made it, I completed it. It had a lovely collar on it with a frill on and it had nice puff sleeves and the fit wasn't right. I took it on holiday to St Ives. Well, we went to Cornwall, um, but since then I took it apart. I've read on the back as a size 12. I've put a seam down the back. To bring it in, I have um, put the fisheye darts down the back and I put it back together and had sewn up the hem and then realised it needs just a little bit more off the sides. So I did that and then it still needs, I want to still put little fisheye darts here or just whatever you call darts here. Um, unfortunately, when I altered the back, I did a an adjustment on the collar which was perfect I kind of nipped it together I found where the seam was I, it really doesn't matter but when I went to cut it I cut the wrong fold I'd folded a part of it and in just a minor moment of misdirection in my thoughts I cut the wrong bit um, I have enough fabric I've cut out another piece so that I can do it with a join in the back which is what it would look like anyway. And at that point it wouldn't have mattered because my hair was down my back, but it's slightly shorter now, but never mind. Um, so I may just leave it without the collar and see how that goes. But just something I have learned from this, I used wooden buttons and they're really cute. They're the really good pink. They do what I wanted them to do, but they have kind of shaved the buttonholes. So they have, they're very rough and just be aware if you're using wooden buttons just be aware if they're not kind of smooth on the edges then you can ruin your buttonholes so i've kind of sorted what i needed to sort but it's another thing to think of that doesn't go in the wardrobe because it's not finished there you go so this is my second take the chance dress and this is the one that i wore for christmas um i didn't make it for christmas i made it well before then there's a picture of me in our son and daughter-in-law's lovely garden where they've been trying to they've got a piece of land at the side and they're trying to rewild it and there is a rather large bug hotel um which i think has been um inspired by the lovely lee nin the ninja gardener lee who is on garden rescue if you're in the uk he's one of the um professional gardeners that does i've already said the word garden rescue with I know her name. Oh, it's so annoying this. It's been a bit strange this week because Alan has two has had two episodes of doing what I do and not knowing the word. 
and it's been really puzzling him and um, I'm like welcome to my world <laughs> but that doesn't help him does it anyway um, yeah I just love this um, again Pattern Emporium on the other one I just did that's your first lit here they also do for tall regular and petite the first tier isn't too baggy here that's I don't like it if if it's anyway you never mind I'm really happy with it but this one I made a mistake in that I had planned to put two short ones again like I did with the other one and I didn't do that um, but it's fine and it, it's quite nice now in this kind of I know it's a cotton dress but it's nice to wear with boots and a kind of heavier underslip and a top underneath it so that's nice and then um yeah so i didn't get this done in time for the knitting and stitching show but i wasn't actually wear it, making it for that but i would have liked to have worn it had i finished it um but i just wanted it as a winter dress a kind of nice lively winter dress because I have a nice, lively, what is, it's a summer weight dress really, but this is what I did wear in my picture with Jen Hogg. Um, but I wore it on the first day and it was lovely. I just, this is my most worn dress. I'll put this down a minute. I, I just have worn it to death really. I made it a couple of years ago and this is an S8875. And this is an S8875. And what I learned from this is you cannot let a stretch velvet bully you around. And because I wouldn't let this stretch velvet bully me around, I did actually get a finished garment but my, was it a, a blinking trial. And that's me being very polite. So, so that's my S8875, S8875, neither of which should have been made in whatever that thing is. Jersey fabric. And this, though it wasn't made this year, or the last either, it was finished last year, and this is my over the top wedding guest dress which is an S8875 I just love the cut on the cut of it on me um, and it was just a bit of madness because I was making it in this from Abakan and I had enough fabric but it had been wrapped t too tightly on one side on the roll and it was quite skewed so you couldn't get the, the pattern um, it was just really difficult to get the pattern to line up because it was on the skew so I couldn't use it for the full dress and then I used this fabric which is more of a, a twill no giving it whatsoever and it's really lovely fabric for the right thing kind of an office skirt or something like that um, and I'd followed a video on how to do the neckline to make sure I didn't that I got a good V, that was my main thing, but I then pressed it over a ham and I bent it, I curved it, and so it sat in a drawer for over 12 months, and then I thought, I was either going to make this for a wedding, as a wedding guest, or this, now this was my Davenport dress, which, as I've said, I say with the billy every time I've worn it, I'll go, I don't like it though. Um, I don't like it, I didn't like it, which is why I took the skirt off. I was, it gave me few options to sort it out because the pockets, you make it, the pattern piece for the front has that shaping, it is the pockets, and then your pocket bag goes in the back and it that makes the seam. And... I hadn't seen then, well Alison hadn't done it then, made a Davenport dress with two backs. So she uses the same, the back skirt measures the same as the front skirt if it didn't have these cut out of it. 
and so she does that now had i done that i could have had more to play with in what how i could alter it but i couldn't alter it and it just made me feel really frumpy it makes me look frumpy on the pictures i look frumpy the fabric is absolutely beautiful but just a little bit dull i have to check in the mirror because this is a bit dull on me oh have i not mentioned that no right so anyway it's waiting i don't know what it's waiting for i think its sleeves are coming off because the sleeves are not right they pull on the back it's to do with my the size i chose it's to do with the fabric i chose it's to do with the fact that i imagine the neck would be quite tight and i put deeper elastic than i needed and i also didn't do it as tight as i needed so i made some er not errors decisions about this that didn't bode well for the f finished article so i'm not blaming the pattern and i really enjoyed and when i did that pattern i really enjoyed the sense of accomplishment when i'd got it all together so that was something i learned then just realizing another thing that i finished in february was this and this had been made a long time i don't know 2020 there's a video of it i think it's my foot my fourth or my fifth no my fourth or fifth video is about me making this cardigan and it is that one and i did have the pattern and i was about to make it and i saw karina at lifting pins and needles and that was the first time i got involved in watching her and learning from her and she had made this and she was kind of flummoxed i would say don't know if you'd know that word that the shoulders were quite low down but if you look on the pattern they kind of are a bit dropped um and then she showed there was a way of in the next in the pattern next time she would take that in but i just lopped some off um i just really enjoyed making it and that gave me a sense of accomplishment but I never wore it because, uh, first of all, I made the sleeves long, a bit too long. And then I took them up and then they were just baggy. They were kind of hanging about and I didn't like it. It felt like a jacket that wasn't a jacket and a cardigan that wasn't a cardigan. So in February, when I did the finally finished in February, I added cuffs to it because I still had some fabric. And I have a dress in this fabric as well. Um, and it's French terry from Flim mingo what's the fancy one felicity no flamingo fabrics at dundee yeah so um the french terry absolutely beautiful quality and i was just so pleased about it now if i made another one which i do plan to do i will make the longer version because it's just a bit um uh, like i say jackety on me just wanted to say that i haven't told you what i'm wearing yet so this is the simplicity 4789 and they call it a jumper dress um <clears throat> so this was a finally finished in february but i think i started it in january i just didn't get to the end of it and um it is fabric that was gifted to me in a lovely hamper that my daughter-in-law put together in 2020 when we weren't allowed to go down for our christmas and um she kept it for me and there were lots of lovely things in and this is one of the fabrics that kind of i didn't know what to do with it. it's kind of um not quite a soft shell not quite a scuba i don't really know what it is but it's also not quite my color so it was what can i make with it where i can bring up some color in it and this is what i chose and it's been really handy i don't wear it a lot because it's um I don't know I don't know why I don't wear it a lot but anyway I wear, I'm wearing it now so I'm showing you just a couple of looks with it is um, although this is not perfect anyway the color wise this is a rose coral cable knit jersey that I got from bobbins and buttons I don't know two years ago or more um, there is a full sew along with this or watch me sew it and I don't talk to you so what's wrong with that <laughs> Uh, and this has got its pockets and I love the ones with pockets. I have the blue one and I have this one with pockets and that one was my second one that I made. 
the free Harper cardigan from Sinclair Patterns. Now, I don't know, I have an idea that it's not free anymore, but maybe you want to check that out. I don't know, but I definitely recommend it. Um, and that is the yellow one, which, yellow, this is the yellow one. The yellow one, yellow ochre, and this fabric is from Andrea at Beyond the Pink Door. And I think I made this for, what's that thing? <laughs> so frugal, 22. And it was, it, it, just, it just goes really well with all my drumming gear, my red, purple and yellow drumming gear that the colors that we used from the, to commemorate the International Brigade who went to fight to help Spain and other countries. But at that point they were banded together from all over different nations, which is why it's the International Brigade to fight against fascism. Um, and one of our band members had a relative in that um, war against fascism, if you like. And there is a commemoration memorial in Wigan because quite a number of people went from Wigan and it's, it commemorates those who were lost in Wigan during that standing up for independence against fascism. So those are why we had the purple, red and yellow. Anyway, that's an aside to this being a really good match for that. And I've got a photograph of that. I think it's on Instagram as well, but um, this is mentioned on my channel at some point, but I never got round to putting on the pockets. Now I do have the pockets, but I still haven't got round to putting on the pockets and I really like it like them with pockets they're just so comfy but this really brings up this um this fabric and it picks out the yellow on here so i do i hadn't but maybe that's why i haven't been wearing it because this has been parked somewhere because if i show you well if i show it you you'll know so i'm not going to show it you i was one day putting on some mascara and you would think oh no she dropped the brush and it went no just a little flick of the mascara went onto, I think it's this side, one other side, and I managed to flick it off onto a tissue, but I couldn't get, I didn't dare look at how to get rid of the stain or what to do about it, and I just kind of left it. And then <clears throat> I did finally do something with it and washed it, and it's come out all right, but I'm aware of where it is, that it is still there, but it doesn't matter. But I wanted to make sure that if I washed it, I would have to wash the packet, the pockets in a bag with the with the cardigan because they may be a different colour. So that's just an excuse why I've still not put them on, <laughs> but they're not on. Anyway, it's a lovely, I just love this make. I love it. So that's that. Obviously not made this year, but... And uh, things I've learned, when I talked about that blue blouse, I had the frill on, I think I've just got much more stickability about something. If I, if I get my head around it, that it's not going to beat me. It's not going to damn well beat me. So that's it. So just to kind of conclude on this video, I think one of the things that I hadn't done at the beginning of the year was make buttonholes, make a garment with buttonholes still yet i have not done an invisible zipper i don't mind not having done an invisible zipper there's a zip in this i can do zips um but one of my things that i want to learn how to do i i feel like i know how to do it i've watched enough tutorials one of the things i want to actually practice doing is putting in an invisible zip and if i want to make something then with an invisible zip i will use an invisible zip whereas if not, I will just use a visible zip. It doesn't really matter to me. But anyway, it's so, that's why I've not really bothered learning how to do it. So that's something I may be looking into. And I just wanted to talk a quick about... These three are not finished. I did start this. I'm sure I still did start this in this year. And this is a really good fit at the top now. It's um, Deer and Doe. Orgave dress, okay, Orgave, Orgave dress, and I just made the top to get a good fit, and I didn't want a wasted dress again for now, and so I was wondering how I could get put 
I've got enough for a dress, whether to put a, a skirt on the bottom of it. But I haven't done that and I've decided that I'm just leaving it as a top. I'll just part those. And I did take the hem up um, and I did sew it just uh, loosely on the bottom with the machine. And then when I tried it on, because I've had to be on a, an exclusion diet recently because I've got some digestive issues and I have lost a little bit of weight. So when I did try it on again, it, I mean, it is meant to be shaped like that. But I added on extra for my hips and it's just a little bit too wide now. So I've taken the hem down on that side, on the sides and I'm going to redo that. And then I need to finish the cuffs and then it's a nice top. But again, that is the same fabric colour, more or less, as that thing I don't like, the Billy sweater. So anyway, it's not the same. It's from some cotton jersey. So that's not finished and wouldn't normally be in my wardrobe. So I've just put that there. This is a Nico top from True Bias. I really love it. I love the way it fits me. I love the way it went together. It's it, This is fabric from, oh, that was fabric from Beyond the Pink Door, Andrea. I don't know if I mentioned that. This is fabric from the swaps table at the Northwest Sewing Social. And I thank the person very much so that it gave me the chance to run one of these up and check it. And it needs its sleeves and hem doing. But it's just been hanging about because I had other things that were more important and this was the main other thing and this is the thing that I am absolutely the most proud about that I have made all year and it is a buy any bag again but this is the bow me over 2.0 and I made I shall say I made an alteration here when that should have been yellow I just um well, I'm not going to go on about it. It's, I put the divider on the back. This should have been, this colour should have been just visible through that pocket. But I switched it round when I was doing something and I should have sewn the pockets on there and had it that way around, if you understand what I mean. And so that would all be yellow inside with those coloured pockets on this. On this. So I'm not going into it. I'm really pleased I did it. I'm not bothered that I did that. Um, it's not caused any possible problems. There is a sew along or that. No, there's not a sew along. There is a video that shows the bits of me making it and the harder bits where you have to go around the bends and stuff um, as you're making it into a three dimensional bag. It's got a fabric, the fabric, um, little fabric, pocket divided pocket and it's got a mesh pocket and in there I just keep my strap um, and that hooks onto these magical things here where you don't you think that the strap goes all the way it's really clever I just love her bags I just do love her bags and I have lots more in the making um, and this is my journey into the cashmere pattern the grafton pattern i don't want to say any more about that because my i know my phone is running very low and i'm going way over the time i thought i would do this was some fabric from truro fabrics that i bought on holiday in june when we went to cornwall and it's really sweet i think it's really quite uh, i just like it it's just pencils isn't it colored pencils but this fit is really lovely on me and um, I'm trying to get a better fit, as I mentioned on a lot of my videos, because I'm quite shallow here. And I'm trying to work through this Grafton pattern. And this is my first endeavour. So I'm really pleased with it. And again, that needs um, the cuffs and the bottom hemming. But that wasn't the purpose in making it to achieve a full garment. And I'm not going to be wearing these till summertime anyway. So that's fine. Um, and just another little thing to mention. These two are my most worn dresses this year. And this wasn't made this year and now there was this. This was my So Frugal, no, oh, So Frugal Frocks it was, wasn't it, the first one. So that was the, the make that I did make and I made it from this pattern. Uh, new look. K6650, but on the front it says heavily altered for Frugal Frocks 2021. So that's what that is. 
and I wear it such a lot and having just lost a few pounds it just sits a little bit lower on me and it's it's just more uh, I've got it gives me a bit more opportunity to wear it if you know what I mean um, but anyway that is my it just feels amazing that dress and I got that fabric from Andrea Beyond the Pink Door and this is from the fabric is from fabrics at Fleetwood and when she first showed it me when I said I wanted something bright and possibly for a wedding and she, she showed it me and I went it's not quite bright enough for me <laughs> and I meant it and I didn't get it and then it mithered me and I went back for it and I just love it I wore it at Southport Flower Show I wore it for my 70th birthday little treat that we went to Manchester and just went to Wagamama's and there's plenty of stretch in it <laughs> for tummies. It's um, French Terry. And it is called hmm, Yasmin. The Yasmin dress from Sinclair Patterns. And instead of just putting the A-line skirt on, I used the skirt and the sleeves from the S8875 and the cuffs from the Harper Cardigan. <laughs> Whoops, I'm going to tie them in a knot now. The cuffs from the Harper Cardigan. And they are my statement sleeves. Statemented. <laughs> As a Susan hack right so I would have finished if I could show you my sidekick bag organizer that I bought that I made for my grandson but that is on a video I think it just says sidekick by any sidekick and that has been amazing I was so pleased he liked it it was it went together really well I took parts of well, I took it in pieces to the sewing social at sewing Institute and I managed to just kind of gently go through some of the pieces and and make more components out of the pieces, if you know what I mean. And so it set me on um, carrying on with it. And I just got it finished in time to take with us. So win-win. So thank you ever so much for all the support I've had from you this year and always. And it turns out I had my third anniversary in October of vlogging and I'm so pleased to still be doing it and to still have an audience and I have got more than a thousand subscribers and I'm looking to possibly do something f for I don't know the next milestone which would be 1200 to me but I'm not I'm not asking you to all subscribe quickly then I can have a thing I'm not bothered about it I'm happy you're with me I'm happy for the views I'm happy for the comments thank you for having patience I haven't got back to my comments Things have been a bit crazy here. We've had a real deep clean and we're still working on it. And I haven't done any sewing this year yet. But I have picked up a couple of fabrics that I did order at the end of December in a 20% sale. No, they were both 20% sales. So I'm really pleased about that. And I will show you those next time. So thank you for watching. It's Susan at Seaside Stitches and bye for now. Mm -hmm.